Hey, what's up, tubers? This is Superdale, and I'm back with another video. On your screen, you see this article from 9to5google.com that says Google is preparing a new Chromecast device powered by Google TV. So what we have right here, this is the Chromecast with Google TV. A nice device um, where you can silo apps, install apps on here, and you can watch quite a few um programs all right you can watch your home videos all of that um it is two gigs of ram eight gigs of internal storage so it's a lot to this device um very very nice and solid but again according to nine to five google.com um google is is preparing to launch another chromecast with google tv some upgrades hopefully all right it says uh, and look let me let me read this article just a little bit but it says uh, right here um in the fall 2020 google launched the chromecast with google tv as a showcase for its new big screen experience but in the recent months many have found this new chromecast to be lacking in the specs department all right and then it says especially storage so they're they're talking about the eight um gigabytes of internal storage um According to the documentation viewed by 9 to 5, Google, Google has an Android powered device in the works code name Boreal. Our APK Insight team was able to confirm the Boreal, the Boreal code name elsewhere. Sorry. Um, for what we've seen, Boreal is directly connected to the same Google TV Chromecast software for android that powers the chromecast with google tv the code name boreal was found in the same family as sabrina so let me stop right there with this sabrina well when it first got announced from the um from individuals who were um looking at it the fcc it was called sabrina all right and that's this is before we even found out it was going to be called um, Chromecast with Google TV. It was just a code name Sabrina. So this device that you see right now on your screen, which is the the Chromecast with Google TV, when it first got introduced, uh, before we even had pictures and everything, it was called Sabrina. So that's what they're talking about. Um, and it tells you right here which refers to the current Chromecast with Google TV. So right now they're saying, unfortunately, no specs or other clues are currently available uh, for Boreal, AKA Sabrina, AKA Chromecast with Google TV, leaving us largely in the dark about the hardware of this next first party Google TV device. The one improvement that is almost certainly arriving is the hardware decoding support for the AV1 format. So I wanna talk about that. What it is, what they're talking about, the AV1 format, it's another um, code, it's a codec, but it, it actually compresses video more. Now, the latest one we have is the H.265, which, you know, it's just a compressor so we can be able to view content. Um, a lot of like 4K content, if we was to use some of these devices that we have now to watch 4k it would not work or it would stutter real bad it would just be a bad experience or if you're watching a movie a marvel's movie um 4k and it's like almost a hundred gigabytes imagine trying to send that down for us to stream using applications like netflix stars disney plus all of that you know hbo max just to name a few they have to compress it in order for us to view it and so with this new av1 kodak is for them even larger ones like 8k that's coming soon supposed to be spectacular but it's just going to be able to compress a lot of that all right and so you can read up more on that but i'm just giving you the the little fast track of what the av1 format is um and it said that was missing from the google the the chromecast with google tv that's android tv now reportedly requires so all the android um what android tv now is requiring i think by the end of march if you come out with anything with android or if you want the license it's going to have that AV1 in it. 
All right. So that's what I take of it. Um, but now let's just and again, I, I'm going to just leave this for you to read. And again, I would love to get your comments on this. Um, but this right here, this is not a bad device, guys. The remote is nice. It could be a little bit longer, but it is pretty nice. It works. Uh, if we can get a few more buttons on here, like YouTube, Netflix, maybe uh, Amazon Prime, you know, uh, maybe uh, HBO Max or Disney, that would be good. But of course, that'll make the remote just a little bit longer, which I, I would love. Um, currently, now, again, this device right here is two gigs of RAM, eight gigs of internal storage. But I will hope that they add something to this. And I'm gonna give one last one at the very end, which I think will help out this device, really when it comes to the competition. So I would definitely like to see more RAM on this device. If we can get three, at least four gigs of RAM, I think that'll be solid. And if we can make this device at least 16 gigs minimum 16 gigs of eternal storage that would be lovely too off also offer the y um the wi-fi 6 technology on it and for some of y'all who may not know what that is that just pretty much it, it helps stabilize the wi-fi it's better signal it's supposed to be stronger i never tested wi-fi 6 but from what i'm hearing it's supposed to be more stable than what we have now but of course the best way the best way to use your devices is to what plug it directly into your network all right um if you have that option um, another one would be putting a second USB-C on here for adaptive storage, uh, making it very, very easy. So even if they do just come out with, let's just say they say we are gonna have four gigs of RAM and eight gigs of internal storage, or if they just keep it the same, hey, it's gonna be two gigs of RAM, eight gigs of internal storage, will at least give us the option where we can just add an OTG, boom, and add the adaptive storage in there, and it just catches on just like that um what would be nice if they was to add some type of ethernet port all right and that way we can plug directly into our network via a network switch or directly to our router that would be beautiful all right that would be beautiful um also one more thing i got two more but this one if they was to put some type of button if we lose this little old remote control right here uh we can go over here and press a button on the device just like they have on the nvidia shield like that tube um you can just go in there press the button and it get the beep and beep 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 and we can find a remote quickly i think that'd be awesome um and last but not least guys i think this is going to be very 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 important um to me i think if they put this device on sale, it went almost, I think it went over a year staying at $50 Why everybody else was putting their devices on sale. Fire TV, Roku, all of them was putting this, these devices on sale. Not to mention what Walmart did with the on TV, all right? The on TV box and the stick. Um, getting a device, uh, of that statue for $19 it was just a game changer all right so if they can put this device on sale the whether it's the older model or the new one put it on sale let the retailers go in make it more competitive I think this would be awesome that way we can enjoy the 4k we can afford we can um experience the HDR the Dolby Atmos enjoy just all of this technology that we have in front of us it's hard to sit back and look at this device and say it's solid but then you got all of these other devices that do same or very similar um, um experiences always on sale and this one is at 50 it's a no-brainer if i can get a device for 20 dollars or 25 dollars and save an extra 25 dollars then what you think the consumer is going to do they're gonna go with the, the cheaper um, brand. 
So I think that's what they need to do. They threw it on sale um, for the holidays for maybe a month. It went up and came back down again, like taking ten dollars off. Um, that's the most I saw it was ten dollars off. Um, but now it's back at fifty. So those are some things. But I would love to hear from y'all. I do know the Nvidia Shield is rain king when it comes to devices, but when it comes to just streaming and no gaming, then we have a whole lot of um, devices out here that will cater to you. It's just up to you. Not everybody needs to spend $150 or $200 just to watch applications or third-party applications. So, again, I would love to hear from you. I would love to get your take on it and see if you agree or not with some of the spec specifications. Also, I might have missed one. I would love to see what you would like. And if you was to get this device for yourself or someone, what would you like to see on here? So again, guys, thank y'all for tuning in. I will see y'all on the next video. I go live Mondays and Fridays anywhere between 6 and 7. So that means I will need for y'all to um, click that like button, subscribe to the channel. Also, click that bell icon and select all, guys. Let's get these numbers up and go from there. I salute y'all. Y'all be safe out there. This is Superdale, and I'm signing out this mother. I'll talk to y'all in a minute. Peace, guys.